There's been a few open weight models recently that can compete with Sonic 4.5 and sometimes even Gemini 3 Pro and Opus on the benchmarks, all of that at a fraction of the cost. And it's not just on the benchmarks either, I'm about to show you that real world usage feels great too. This would have been pretty unbelievable to me over a year ago. The models that I'm talking about are Minimax 2.1 and GLM 4.7, so let's just jump in and explore the ups and downs of these new models, as using these really surprised me. I'll start with the good and what surprised me the most. These models are both really good at UI design. I think the generally preferred model for UI at the moment is Gemini 3 Pro, but I ran the same prompt on open code for a finance dashboard where I just want the UI, we'll actually add in the back end later, and I tested it against Minimax, GLM, Opus, Sonnet, and Gemini, and I think you'll see that all pretty good at this. This is the result that Minimax 2.1 gave me, and to be honest with you, I can't really fault this design. It's a very nice looking finance dashboard, it has a good use of colors, the color scheme actually works, and there aren't really any issues with accessibility, you can read all of the text here, and it's used some nice colors in general. It's gone with a nice green color, it hasn't used too many gradients like AI tends to do, and as I said, this is pretty much what I would expect from a finance dashboard, and all of this actually only cost me two cents to run. If we then compare that to Opus 4.5, the most expensive model. This one cost me 50 cents, and to be honest with you, I do like the design, but I can't say it's worth 25 times more than the one that we just saw. They're both pretty similar in their design. The same can be said for Sonic 4.5, which we're seeing the design of here. This one actually cost 26 cents to run, and GLM 4.7 here also looking pretty similar to the other designs, except for the fact that you use light mode, and this one cost 6 cents to run. The only model that did something a little bit different from the bunch was Gemini 3 Pro. You can see the design that we have here, and to be honest with you, I think it's subjective at this point which one is better. I do really like the design that Gemini 3 Pro has given me here, but it does get minus points, as I actually asked it not to use purple or any purple gradients, but it seems that LLMs do still just love love purple. I'd love if you hit that subscribe button. So to me, based on those results, open weight models have caught up in UI design and even for simple coding tasks, which is pretty cool to see. In fact, it's not just my single test that's evidence of this. If we take a look at Design Arena, a site where users can rank models' designs head to head and give it an ELO score, here we can see Minimax and GLM do really well, even better than Claude Sonnet. But interestingly, I have personally found that I get better results from Minimax than GLM, but at Design Arena here, GLM takes the lead. So let's take this a step further then and ask it for something a little more difficult. This time I gave it a much longer prompt where we're actually asking it to build out a full application based on some boilerplate that I gave all of the models, which was based on Next.js, Drizzle, and SQLite. You can see the prompt that I gave them here, and I even gave all of them their original mockup, so we should get a finance app that looks similar to what we just saw in the mockups, and I had quite a lot of implementation guides and what I would consider a success criteria. So hopefully if the app has all of these features, I'll consider the model as a success. We'll start by going over the end result that I got out of Minimax. This was after about 30 minutes of prompting, and this only cost me 30 three cents for this entire application. And you can see it does sort of look like the mock-up that we got earlier. We can see that design here. It looks very similar with the card layouts and we have our financial goals and sort of the pie chart. The only thing that it sort of got wrong was the color scheme isn't correct and we don't have that green button over here, but it did a fairly good job. I could fix this in a couple of prompts. As for the features of the app, I can confirm that it is all working and it is hooked up to the back end and adding things to the database, but there is a slight issue with the dialogue here. You can see it has a transparent background. We actually add in some data here. Everything does update correctly. And it's also added in the extra pages for accounts, transactions, and goals that I asked for as well. Next, we have the output that GLM 4.7 gave me after about 30 minutes of prompting. And you can see this one has done really well as well in matching the mock-up. There's slight differences, but it's done very well in the overall layout and it has got the correct color scheme nearly. So I'd say it's done a very good job in matching the design. As for the features themselves, they don't actually work. I tried for ages to get these to work. We can see there is a bit of an issue where the text is white in these inputs here. It just got really caught up on a database issue. And no matter how many times I prompted it, it just wouldn't work out how to connect Drizzle with a local database, even though the other models didn't actually seem to struggle with this. So in the end, after 30 minutes, I had to give up. And overall, this actually cost $2.64 and used about the same amount of tokens as Minimax. So Minimax is much cheaper. And finally, we'll take a look at Sonic 4.5, which is in the same category as our open weight models. They perform about the same on the bench benchmarks. And you can see here, I was actually pretty disappointed with this result. I thought Sonic 4.5 was going to be the winner, as overall I'd had pretty good experience with this Sonic when I'd been using it. But the design here just is pretty bad. It doesn't match what we had in the initial mock-up, which we can see here. I think the mock-up is really nice. It just didn't manage to match it at all, even though I provided it with the mock-up and I did the same for all of the other models. All of the features do actually work. So we do have our accounts and transaction pages and everything does work in here to actually delete add transactions. So I guess it's a little bit different from GLM there, where GLM actually didn't implement the backend features correctly, but it managed to implement the mock-up design correctly. 
Claude here implemented the back end quite well, but not the front end. But overall, Minimax for 33 cents did incredibly well, and this one cost me $5.22 to make. As for the prompting experience, all of these models are pretty similar. They will start out doing their to-do list, and then they get started with decoding. And in fact, all of the models didn't actually complete the task in the first prompt. In fact, GLM and Minimax added coming soon buttons, so when I clicked on it, it showed me a notification just saying this feature is coming soon. And Claude, at the end of its first output, just told me that it had only done about 80% of the features, so I asked all of them to carry on until it had completed it. The only one that I ran into a slight issue with was Minimax. You can see after a bit of time here, it's thinking just started to repeat itself. Now, I don't know if this is an issue with Minimax itself or the way it's implemented in open code or open router, but it happened every time that I used this model. And we see it actually gets to a point where the thinking just starts to repeat itself constantly. I am actually scrolling at the moment. So I had to tell it to stop and then just asked it to continue after it got stuck in this loop. Then it just carried on coding like normal. But after some time, it does start to repeat itself in the thinking again. So I'm not too sure what that issue is. I also spotted a funny moment in Minimax's thinking where it ran into a TypeScript issue and it considered just using JavaScript instead of TypeScript so we don't have TypeScript checking in development, which definitely isn't the correct fix for TypeScript issues. You can actually see the fix it ended up going with was just casting to as any, which isn't a great fix either, but spoiler alert, Claude Sonnet made the exact same fix. So yeah, I was actually really surprised by these results. Minimax performed the best personally for me on both of the tasks, and despite my beliefs going in, that Sonnet had something special when it came to coding. I've had great experiences when using Sonnet before. So it's just a little bit crazy to me that these open weight models have caught up so fast. We can now have a competent self-hostable model, even if you might need a few 5090s or a couple of Mac Studios. And even if you can't self-host these models, they are way cheaper on providers like Open Router. Again, the app that I got from Minimax cost 33 cents compared to the one that I got from Sonnet, which was $5.22. My final note though, is I was still a little disappointed when I was using all of these models. And that may sound a little bit odd, and it's not the model's fault. It's the fact that I've been spoiled in the last few months with Opus 4.5 and Gemini 3 Pro. They really do feel like a step up to me. And I know the open weight models aren't in the same category as Opus and Gemini 3 Pro, but when we're talking about costs, we do have to consider how well the model does on its first attempt. And this was a result that I got from Opus 4.5 in a single prompt. It pretty much nailed getting the mock-up correct here. You can see it looks pretty much the exact same. And all of the features worked in a single prompt that took around 10 minutes. The same goes for Gemini 3 Pro as well. This was a result that I got. It did take a few more prompts. I think I had one or two errors that I had to go back and ask it to fix. But again, it only took around 10 minutes and it's matched the mock-up really well and all of the back-end features work. If we are talking purely from a cost perspective, I do think you have to factor in your time and the fact that you could send a task to Opus and Gemini and be much more confident that when you come back in 10 minutes, that you're going to have a result that might be fully completed or only has a few issues. Whereas with the other models, they might require a lot more manual oversight. Especially if you're a company, I think Opus and Gemini just make a whole lot of sense. Let me know in the comments what you think though. Hopefully this year we might even see an open model catch up with Opus 4.5. While you're down there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.